Hello guys, welcome to my tutorial. I think this one will be much more exciting for both touch designer and notch developers. It is the best combination for real-time interaction design that using the power of touch designer to make the environment and connect everything. Then using the magic tricks in notch to create fascinating content. No matter where you came from, either you came from the touch designer or you came from the notch, the first thing you attempt and experiment is the integration of both softwares. Basically, you are offered two different ways to integrate them, but different requirements. So in this one, I'm going to introduce a much more economical way for beginners or individual artists to run both of them and achieve the same effects. As I mentioned before in the previous tutorial, I'm still using the free version of the touch designer and holding the Notch Learning License. Compared to the Notch Base Builder, the Notch Learning License is the best starting point to build your skills. So the first way to integrate them is exporting the Notch Media Server blocks to the Touch Designer. It is supported in the Notch Learning License, but unfortunately, it is not supported in Touch Designer. As you can see, if you bring in the notch top, the minimum requirement to run notch blocks actually is having the learning license of touch designer. However, if we look back the spec of notch, it is also supporting the protocol of NDI and OSC. This will be the second technique that we are going to share with you guys in this tutorial. So if you guys are holding more advanced license, you can check these amazing tutorials from Ivers. In this one, he introduced a technique about running notch blocks in touch designer. Also, he produced a lot of great contents, which are very worth learning. I do recommend to check these. Okay, this is the overview of the basic requirement you need to know before we dive into the second technique. First, let me show you the demo file. It is quite simple. I just made a spinning image in Touch Designer and added some effects in Notch. I'm using the NDI and OSC protocols to bridge both softwares. Also, I can open the LFO parameters from Touch Designer to control the frequency of the effects in Notch in real time. One last step before we start is to get the NDI tool. You can go to this link to download it. The virtual input is the key and reason why we are using it. Let's delete everything and get start. First, I have the NDI tool running behind the scene. Then I'd like to get our image and data ready in Touch Designer. First, we can bring in a movie file in and choose a picture from the library. Then connect to the transform, type in the most commonly used code. Just make some movement to show that the image being sent to the notch is in real time. Right now, I feel like it's spinning too fast, so I can multiply the value by 0.5 and trying to get rid of the alpha channel by scaling it a little bit larger. Connect to a null at the end, then connect to an NDI out to get ready to send out the image to the notch. You can check the source name in here. It is named Touch Designer automatically. Turn on the display so that we can see the image clearly in the background. Choose a LFO. The original data range is from minus 1 to 1. We can make some change to map the data from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to 1. Same here. Connect to the null at the end and connect to an OAC out to get ready to send out the data. OK, great. Now we can start to work on the notch side to receive the data flow. The same, we need to build some basic stuff. 
First, we need to bring in an image 2D. Press short key Ctrl R to connect to the root. Then, find the video NDI source. Connect it to the video node. Find and change the virtual input in here. So now, Notch is able to receive the image or video resource coming from the touch designer. So once we receive the image, we can use the power of Notch to make some wonderful effects in real time. I can find the glow, connect to the root so that we can see the effects. The blend amount is what we're going to change by the value coming from the touch designer. Okay, now we need to start to make some changes to the setting to receive the OSC data. First, click project, find the setting, go to the protocols, enable the OSC and remember the value of the port. Second, go to the view and click the connection monitor so that we can check it in the view. Third, bringing our OSC modifier into the canvas. Okay, that's great. That's all you need to do in the side of Notch. Just double check the value of the port, 9001. Let's go back to the touch designer. Change the network port with the value we just remembered. Now you should able to see some data flow coming into the notch. The last step is to connect to the OSC modifier to the parameters we just chose. But first, we need to change the value back to zero. Then connect to the OSC modifier to the parameter blend amount. Okay, it is already been connected. But why nothing has changed? Because we also need to go to the OSC address to type in the exact address we are going to use. It's called channel 1. So we type in slash channel 1. Great. Now we are using the value coming from the touch designer to control the effects in notch in real time. What if we have more than one channels to control different parameters in notch? That's easy. What we can do is adding a merge to our chain in touch designer and copy and paste the LFO, connect to the merge, just make some change on our frequency in order to see which one is controlling which effect. And also we can rename our LFO. So this one is controlling the effects of glow. Let's find another effect in notch. I'm going to add another effect called distortion. Add distortion to our canvas. Connect to the root. Same here. The blend amount is what we're going to change later. Do the same step again. We can add another OSC modifier into the canvas. Go to the distortion, change the parameter back to zero. Connect the OSC modifier to it. As you can see, here appears another channel called channel 2. Type slash channel 2 to the OSC address. Now it is working. The effects are controlling by two different values coming from touch designer. So if we change the frequency on touch designer side, so you can see those two effects have been changed in notch in real time. Now I'd like to show you how to send a video or image back to the touch designer 
using the same NDI trick to form a closed loop. In case you want to do something or send it out to a LED screen on touch designer side, we can find the NDI output in notch, put it into the canvas and connect it to the root. Then go back to the touch designer, find the NDI in top, choose the right source name, you should able to see the name called Notch NDI Sender. Now the processed video has been sent back to the touch designer. Here have some little tips for you because I always forget it. Notch is reading the notes from the top to the bottom. As you can see, if I put the NDI output under the different layers, it is actually sending out the different process the video. So it is really critical to pay some attention on the layer relationship in Notch. So just keep it in mind. Whenever you want to use the NDI output, just put it at the very bottom. You can control the effects by changing the parameters in Touch Designer if you want to. You can also create some sliders or buttons to change the value. The last tip is when we change the size of the viewport in the notch. As you can see, it is actually changing the resolution that being sent to the touch designer. If we want to have a fixed resolution, we can go to the project setting, click the rendering, then choose our output resizing to skew filter output to the window. Right now, the resolution is 1920 by 1080, but unfortunately, the free version of the touch designer, it is also limiting the max resolution with 1280 by 1280, so we can go back to rendering and change the output width and height to 1280 by 720 in order to use the maximum performance of both software. Right now, no matter how you change the size of the viewport, the resolution has been fixed to 1280 by 720 and sent to the touch designer. And what's more, you can also use the software that has the OSC protocol like ZigZag or touch OSC on your cell phone. I've already shared the technique about how to connect those to the touch designer and it's the same logic to connect those to the notch. You can go to my website here or my YouTube channel to check how to use those softwares. So now we are able to using the power of the notch and the touch designer together to create some real-time fascinating effects using the free version of the touch designer and just the learning license of Notch. I believe it's great to know this trick to work with them as a starting point of your career. Alright guys, that's all I want to share in this tutorial. As I'm moving forward, I will share more techniques with you guys. Okay. Thanks for watching, happy programming.